Hello, my name is Michael Hooper, and today I'm going to talk about living abroad and painting in Paris. It's raining outside, and I thought it would be a good time to meditate on these beautiful topics. When I was a boy, my grandfather gave me books about adventure writers like Robert Service and Ernest Hemingway. Robert Service wrote poetry about his adventures in the Yukon, Gold Rush, around 1900. He made a small fortune with the spell of the Yukon and the cremation of Sam McGee. He moved to Paris where Robert Service wrote Ballads of a Bohemian, a book that inspired me. In college, I read The Sun Also Rises by Hemingway and dreamed of seeing bullfights in Spain. He glamorized his time in Paris with a movable feast, the long talks in the cafes, and the ski trips to the Alps. His Old Man in the Sea amplified what I had experienced as a child in Puerto Rico, where my mother grew up. My uncle Juanin Reyenas um, took us on a boat ride to this island where I saw this purple, yellow, and gold fish swimming around below the surface. All this sort of dazzled my imagination with hopes and dreams of seeing the world someday. <clears throat> While in my 20s, I met several people who had saved up enough money so that they didn't have to work for two or three years while they were traveling. Two of them were Austra from Australia. They were traveling and living in these exotic places in Europe and living on the cheap. I read a story in the Omaha World Herald about a man who lived overseas on his dividends from his stock portfolio, and I thought, wow, this seems like the life I want to live. A friend of mine was living in Greece and she sent me a postcard of an empty park bench in, on the beach. And she asked, what is missing from this picture? And I thought of this empty park bench. And I'm like, me, I should be there. I earned an architectural drafting degree at a junior college and later a degree in journalism from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. After two years of working as a reporter at the Fremont Tribune and the Grand Island Independent, I saved up $5,000, quit my job, and moved to Europe. I traveled through Holland, Germany, Belgium, Austria, and Italy before taking a boat to Greece. I got a job at the Orpheus Hotel in Athens, and there I worked as a runner and gathered tourists at the train stations and brought them back to the hotel. In about four hours' work, I made enough money to live without touching my savings. With my time off, I worked on a novel, I hung out with my friends, I studied the language, I drank beer and ate peanuts with my friends Archie and Basin. Archie was this independent, sort of exotic-looking woman from Australia, very determined in her way of living, and her partner was Basim from Cairo. He seemed very exotic, dark and handsome and very convincing in his delivery of speech. These people taught me that perhaps living to work was the wrong answer. Maybe instead work so that you may live the, the way you want to live. I met this guy named John Pierre. He and I would sit around and play backgammon, go back to his apartment and listen to the doors, riders on the storm, get high and Look at the sea of motorcycles and cars and trucks and people walking and running everywhere in this huge metropolitan city of Athens. I loved it. I just thought, I can do this. This is the way I want to live. When I returned to the States, broke in 1990. I went back to work and later met my wife, Heather, in the newsroom at the Grand Island Independent. She was enchanted with Europe and always wanted to go there. So when we married in 1993, we spent a month in Europe. Uh, we kind of followed the path of Vincent van Gogh through Holland, France, and 
down to Arles, France, where the oldest living woman, Jean Calment, was living, and she remembered selling colored pencils to Van Gogh <clears throat> and called him a dirty, smelly man. Van Gogh was so obsessed with his art, he let his hygiene go. Many years later, after our, after our children moved out of our house and the dog died, I took up painting. I had been using my garage for a Bitcoin mining studio, but shut that down in 2018 and picked up a paintbrush in December of that year and have been painting ever since. Encouraged by my wife and a good friend in Paris, I decided to book a flight there in October 2021. I boarded my flight in Kansas City, flew to Chicago, and then took an overnight flight to Paris, eight and a half hours. Crowds were minimal because people were still worried about COVID. The number of Asians were down significantly because, probably because of the closed economy in China at the time. And most tourists I met were Europeans visiting Paris. Paris is full of enchantments and delights. For the artists, this place is deeply meaningful because France is home to the Impressionists, who are so beloved. The Musée des Orsay is popular for all its paintings of Van Gogh and Renoir, Matisse, Paul Gauguin, and others. To me, Van Gogh captures a sense of the sublime in just about everything he does. He paints in the fields of France, the blazing sun upon him. I wanted to be like him in the field, kind of channeling here this amazing genius. In some ways, the experience of creating art is superior to the outcome. Yet what remains is a reminder of this magnificent state of transcendence when a piece of art that you are creating grabs you and won't let you go until you, it's finished. I felt alive in this artistic experience living in a hotel on the Rue de Seine, making my dream a reality of painting in Paris. I experienced Paris with my own eyes as an artist. It was a delight and a challenge, and sometimes uncomfortable and even painful during some of these, doing some things that I'd never done before, you know, meeting people I'd never met and experiencing conversations with other writers and artists. I painted a dozen paintings in Paris, and most of them while I was there, and then I produced a book about it three months later. This is my book, A Painter in Paris. I'm going to go through a couple of these paintings. This was a painting I did for um, at the Luxembourg Gardens in um, in Paris. It was uh, a beautiful day, and I went down to the Medici uh, fountain and was painting this painting and this guy named Jim Wallace came up to me. He started talking to me and telling me all about my art and and how he loved it and and we quickly became friends and and I told him I was looking for spots to paint and in Paris and particularly in the in my neighborhood uh, at the Hotel La Louisiane on the Rue de Seine and he said well I'll come share a walk with you on Thursday and so a few days later, he came down and we toured all these beautiful spots and I painted nearly all of them. This is my first painting in Paris. It's the Pont Neuf, uh, a famous bridge in Paris. Many other artists have painted there. Uh, I loved it. It was such an ex just an exhilarating experience setting up my easel and chair and painting the scene. I just, just really loved it. Um, and it's, you know, an okay painting. Not the greatest in the world, but it has that feeling, it captures that feeling that I had of that exuberance for the city. I met some interesting artists while I was there, and this is one of them. His name is Christian Bayard. And Christian would sit, 
stand on a corner with a drafting board and draw these extensively detailed um, street scenes. Absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, I really enjoyed this conversation. We had some interesting talks and uh, just really enjoyed each other's company. And uh, so I ended up painting this portrait of him and um, I sent him a picture of it. And he said he t has been tilting his head like that since, he, since childhood. Also, while I was there, I, I met my friend Chris Welsh. He was living there and working in Paris, and he took me to this place called Café La Maison, and all oh, the food was just fabulous, and we ate just incredibly good food. I had escargot, um, mushrooms, potatoes, green beans, and lamb chops. Oh my gosh. It was just so much food. I loved every bit of it. Didn't have to eat the next day because I was still kind of full. And here's another painting I did in Paris. This is my friend Clem, Clement. He is, um, I met him on the street. He was just kind of hanging out there in front of the hotel. And I didn't initially think I would take his, you know, t uh, paint him. I didn't think I'd paint him, but he wanted me to paint him. And so he said, take my picture. And uh, so I did. And then when I got home, I got to thinking, man, this guy's really interesting. And so I painted this in my studio. And then... Heather, my wife, and I went back to Paris last summer and stayed at the hotel, and I went down to the laundromat to say hello to, to Clem, and there he was, and he, uh, he embraced me, and, and uh, he told my wife, hey, don't take this wrong, but I love his work, and gave me a kiss on the cheek. How awesome, you know, to be welcomed back to Paris uh, with a kiss on the cheek. I did not get COVID. It was a beautiful moment, kind of uh, the way Paris used to be, where people would hug and kiss each other on the cheek and make them feel loved and welcome. That I do love about uh, the people of Paris. They are, um, they kind of get a bad reputation, but I found them to be absolutely delightful and um, a lot of fun, really. I think one of the things I want to leave, leave you with on, on this is that travel is made all the more better when you dig into the neighborhood where you live. And that's what I did in Paris on the Rue de Seine and staying at the Hotel La Louisiane. Such an artistic place. I love the hotel. The Rolling Stones stayed there. Um, Ernest Hemingway stayed there. Miles Davis. There was a poet there, uh, poetry reading there one night. I just met all these interesting people and uh, loved it. It made the experience all the better. All right, enjoy, travel safe, have fun, take care. Bye-bye.